Hello, this is Denver Riddle from Color Grading Central, and in this video tutorial, we'll be covering shot to shot matching. When I talk about shot to shot matching, I'm talking about ensuring the continuity from one shot to the next. Mismatch shots can arise from different lighting setups, shooting at different times of the day, or a multiple camera shoot. There's also a benefit to shot to shot matching in speeding up our workflow, because when we apply a stylized look to our timeline, there's a greater tendency for everything to match, even with the look applied. Let me introduce you to the techniques and tools for performing shot to shot matching. The first technique is using your eye to match and then jumping back and forth between the shots to compare them. The second is a cool feature called a still store, but unfortunately Final Cut Pro 10 doesn't support this feature. What the still store allows us to do is to store a frame and then to place that frame on top of the shots that we're matching and allow us to see both shots simultaneously. Of course we have the scopes and they can be very useful in helping us resolve the difference between two clips when our eyes are having difficulty. Lastly, and a new feature in Final Cut Pro 10 is the match color. Now I'm not going to get into the mechanics of how it works, but suffice it to say that it performs a mathematical trick in matching the shots together. So let's do some color grading. I have the sequence here that we'll be working on. The director wanted the shots all matched to more of a dusk look, not dark, just later in the evening. But because the daylight was waning during the shoot, we can see the inconsistencies in the first two shots. So we'll match these shots by eye and we'll jump back and forth to compare them and we'll also use our scopes to help us. So we'll begin by matching the second shot which is lighter to the first one since this has more of the dusk look that we want. Over here in the color board, you'll notice by dropping the global exposure which seems like the intuitive thing to do, it crushes our blacks and lowers our highlights causing them to look milky. Now not that crushing the blacks is bad here since we're going for the dusk look, but what do we do about our highlights? So I'll reset that and instead what we'll do is pull down on the midtones. Doing it this way it will help with our dynamic range and it will keep our highlights from becoming milky. Okay, now let's compare what we've done. Also, if we look in the waveform monitor, we'll see that we're nearly there. So I'll make some additional changes, jumping back and forth, comparing these. Okay, I think that we're there on the exposure. Looking at the waveform monitor, you can see that we have matching trace in the highlights, and we also have matching trace of the grass which is collected closer towards the bottom of the scope. For the color temperature in the shot, since it's later in the day, we want it to be a little bit cooler since this is the color temperature once the sun goes down. So I'll quickly perform this match by pushing a little bit of blue into the highlights. And that's it. Okay, let's reset this and then what I want to do is give the color match feature a try. To use the color match, we'll click the second shot since that's the one we want to apply the change to and then find the color match feature under the modify menu. We can also use the keyboard shortcut command alt M. Then we'll pick an area in the first shot that we want to match the second shot to. If we're happy with the preview that's been created then we'll click apply. That actually looks pretty good. Looking over at the color board, you'll notice that the color match didn't make any changes to the parameters. This is a caveat in using the color match. Since everything is done in the background, we don't have any access to the parameters if we want to make additional changes. But let me show you an example of where the color match clearly won't work. In the next two shots, I'll try to match the first shot to the second. I'll click the first shot, choose color match, and then I'll choose an area in the second shot and Ralph. That looks like crap. Now you might not be able to see it on this encoded version of the video, but on my video monitor I see a lot of posturizing and it just doesn't look good. So I'm not going to apply that. So I'll hit cancel. The only thing that I can suggest here in this scenario is to pick the best exposed shot, which is the first shot, and match the second shot to it. I tried it this way and got better results. So let's get back to manually matching. I'll start with the first shot inside the truck and match it to the rest of the sequence going for that dusk look. 
In this case, I'm okay with crushing the blacks here. I want to keep the exposure in the midtones, so I'll play the shadows in midtones back and forth until I've done this. For the color, I'm still unhappy about the green color cast that we fixed in the color balance tutorial. So I'm going to subtract the green from the highlights, and I still want a cool color cast to match the color temperature of the first two shots. So I could either do two things. I could either do a secondary, or I could use the global control here and get the cool color cast. Now I just need to finish up by matching the second shot to this first shot. I'll be using the same techniques that we used in the first shot but I'm going to jump back and forth so that I can make sure that I get the amounts right. Okay, I think that's it. In wrapping up, I want to say that ultimately, at the end of the day, if the shots match judging with our eyes, then that's it. End of story. If it's good enough for our eyes, no matter of matching with scopes or other bells and whistles is going to make a difference. So you might ask, should I use the color match feature of Final Cut Pro 10? Well, if it works, then go for it. If not, then just manually do it. But let your eyes be the ultimate judge. Up next, the sexy part of color grading, creating looks. Thanks for watching.